And uh, now it's my pleasure to introduce one of our colleagues at the Swedish Agency for Marine and Water Man Management, Mr. Anders Skarstedt. Anders is uh, the program coordinator of, of our program to work on the national plan for the revision of hydropower in Sweden. So he will give an overview of the history and where we are at and challenges and opportunities. You're welcome, Anders. Thank you. Uh, we start with a uh, brief, I think brief or maybe long history. Yes. So, to start with, uh, you need to know a little bit about uh, our Swedish history, about uh, the legislation and uh, hydropower in Sweden. Uh, as uh, we share a lot with uh, Norway, our hydropower was developed in the 1900 to 1960s, the most of them. And especially the large hydropower plants were built during that time. And also in the start of the 1900, we had five different water courts that decided, ruled about the permits for the hydropower plants. And then we come to 1999. Uh, then we had a situation where we had different environmental laws uh, and we decided in Sweden that we would combine them in one environmental act that started in 1990. And after 1990, the Water Framework Directive were implemented in the Environmental uh, Act. And uh, there were several investigations about how to change the legislation about water operations in, in the Environmental Act. There were some criticism about uh, how we were implemented. And uh, to the story, there are also uh, best to know that there were almost no revisions of the existing permits. So we had permits that were uh, issued in the start of the 1900 that all, all uh, went on, especially, basically. And uh, during this time, 2012 to 2016, there were a stakeholder process to uh, discuss environmental issues and uh, hydropower issues to see if we could combine environmental uh, uh, things to end production. And during this time, the European Commission was asking Sweden several questions how it was possible to implement the Water Framework Directive if we didn't revise the existing permits. So, so we come to 2018, where there were a, a all-party agreement on energy uh, in the Swedish Parliament, which uh, led to the changes in 2019 about uh, that uh, all hydropower plants will have to see uh, revise their permits and 2022 the first uh, hydropower plants uh, were submitting their uh, revisions to the environmental court The Swedish hydropower situation, uh, as you can see here, uh, the red circles represents where the, the, the amount of production in different parts of Sweden. Uh, as you can see, the most of the production is in the north of Sweden. And you can also 
see that about 400 uh, hydropower plants stands for almost 98% of the total production. Uh, many of these, uh, many of all uh, hydropower plants uh, lack measures for connectivity. And small hydropower plants dominate in the southern of Sweden. Our national plan for modern environmental measures in the hydropower plants is a way to improve ecological status in the waters. Uh, as uh, you've heard earlier, we have about 2,000 hydropower plants, uh, and almost all of them have to make an application uh, or revision of their permits to the land and environmental courts. Uh, and we don't have the re resources to revise everyone at the same time. Uh, and therefore, Sweden have been divided in different application groups uh, with a specific time when the hydropower operator shall uh, submit their application. And the, the plan is uh, carried out under a period of 20 years, starting in February 2022. So it's quite ambitious. We have heard other countries talk about uh, revisions of seven years and so on. And that will not be the case in Sweden if we should hold 20 years. Also in this national plan, we have guidance to the five water authorities where there can be a reason to declare a water body as heavily modified. And there are also two, 22 catchment areas that are the most important for regulatory power that are listed in this uh, national plan. Uh, the county administrative boards are responsible for a collaboration process uh, which involves operators, other authorities and NGOs that precedes uh, the submitting of the application to the court. And the collaboration process is, uh, is a new thing in the legislation. We don't have it in other areas. Uh, and there will certainly be run-in issues. Uh, and that's, for example, syncing with other ongoing processes. And one of them, those are the reviews of environmental quality standards by the water authorities. And the court will assess different pleas for measures in relation to the environmental conditions. And as you can hear there are uh, quite a decentralized decision making here. We have five uh, water authorities, we have five land and environmental courts that decides in this uh, area. interesting <laughs> no <laughs> yes yes <laughs> yes <laughs> um, yeah no. okay where are we now 2023 uh, about a hundred hydropower plants have uh, submitted their applications during 2022 uh, the courts have decided in less than 20 applications. So uh, we, have, we don't have uh, much results. Uh, the majority of these hydropower plants are small, less than 1.5 megawatt installed effect. Uh, 
we can see that there are 53 applications for new fish passages. Uh, and given the fact that uh, we have uh, very few fish passages now, there will be a significant uh, positive effect of these uh, applications. And we also have 22 applications to decommission dams. Uh, and the many of, most of the applications are in the south of Sweden. And those that, that choose to decommission are, the most of them are very small, and some of them don't have any hydropower production right now. Uh, as Jakob mentioned, uh, there are some uh, uh, discussions and there are some new investigations on effects on the electrical system under 2023. So under this year, the government will decide how to proceed with the national plan. And one can wonder, are they doing this uh, freely? When this uh, legislation was put in place, uh, eight of the largest uh, energy companies decided to uh, put aside a fund the Hydroelectrical Environmental Fund. And this is important to, to know though, then. It's not the state fund, it's the private owner's fund. And they have set aside 1 billion euro where the hydropower companies can seek uh, compensations for their costs in the revision process and for mitigation measures after uh, their new uh, permission. Uh, so that's a real uh, big help for the uh, hydropower companies. Then I was finished. Thank you. <laughs>